You have burning questions and I want to get you the answers fast. So here's the condensed version of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen's newest developer live streams burning questions. Let's go. Um, any chance the roadmap could be more of a flow chart or something that shows what's being worked on and what's next? It would be great if it was easier to follow progress to alpha. Um, this is a great question because it happens to be at the forefront of our to-do list and our specific department. Um, we agree that the roadmap has become needlessly confusing and bloated. And much like we have simplified our Discord server and the official forums, we'd also like to make the roadmap more at a glance and easier to navigate. So I would expect to see that in the upcoming months. Yeah. And uh, check the producer's letter at the end of the month. Maybe you'll get a little bit more details. Shh. Of the recent projects, what was a memorable challenge and how did you overcome it? So this is uh, this is pretty cool because there's a couple different ones here. So the immediate dev that jumped into this was David and uh, Steve Clover also jumped in with some of the recent work that they've done. So as per David, um, I will highlight what he said. So he talked about the math behind the scenes of the stats coming to life for crafted items and getting a lot of trial and error on what they wanted to achieve. Our testers have had a really big feel on this and understand sort of some of the complications and bugs that we originally had and how they're working through it and things like that. So it's been a big focal point for David recently. Um, and this put him deep within spreadsheets for an amount of time. Now, when he answered the question for us, he was legitimately like, oh, I was stuck in spreadsheets. No, no, no. If you know David, he likes spreadsheets. Don't, don't even fall for being stuck in spreadsheets. He enjoyed it. Um, 100%. Yeah. And, and one of the cool things about this, because Steve jumped in as well, this led to a lot of back and forth with him and Steve. And for those that don't know Steve Clover, who joined our programming team, um, he has had a huge hand in like system implementation. So he and David have really uh, done all of this pretty, pretty quickly. Now, Steve wouldn't admit that. Steve will say, oh, well, I just did this, I just did that. But I will tell you that it's been pretty quick. Steve said that the crafted item stuff was some of the biggest challenges so far. Um, and, you know, they really had to start from the ground up with coding and implementation. It was just a challenge. I mean, it was everything from the interface pieces to how it would look to the player to how it actually function. You know, Steve came in and just with David's data and planning was really able to implement that really quickly. And I think we've seen quite a few things, you know, again, not uh, overhyping Steve here, but a lot of things that Steve has been able to put in um, that's been very quick and pretty impactful. I mean, anything from the calibration screen uh, for the light and darkness of the player's screen when uh, people were having a hard time seeing a lot of those types of systems. So uh, really those two uh, hit on that. Uh, I do have to put in there, uh, Chris Perkins, uh, everyone knows by Joppa, hopped in right at the end as we were putting these together and, and quote, uh, he said, I'd say class in combat balance. He said he'd be sure to update us when he's overcome it. <laughs> but uh, I think with what we're seeing in the classes, um, and, and honestly, I'm not saying this just as a dev. Um, I think if our VIPs uh, talked about their classes and how they have been updated in the last few months, it's been tremendous. Um, the classes feel unique. They feel powerful. They feel fun. Um, and, you know, we're still going here on a couple more. So So next up, um, does JN have any plans for a Pantheon novel or series of books at some point? So JN's response was, if we get to a point where the game is successful enough to warrant a novel, we'd be delighted to do that. That said, creating the game, the in-game stories, dialogues, quests, how the player will interact with the world in-game is most Im what's most important and where our focus is. While that type of thing is awesome, the content in the game needs to be and is priority. So there you have it. JN is awesome, but JN is currently focused on the game. So the question from the community was, as AI enters the mainstream, Specifically, how do you see artificial intelligent technologies impacting Pantheon's future development? Uh, it's a pretty hot topic. It's a pretty intense topic, but we had two different views of this. We had one from our art department and one from one of our executives, our, our customer service manager. So we'll start with our art department, um, which is Tara. And she said, um, while AI is an interesting technology, oh no, I'm sorry, this is uh, Michael first, my apologies. 
Michael said, while AI is an intriguing technology, I don't see it as a golden tool for development. There are some interesting applications, especially around making NPCs more alive in a game world. However, great game design will still require the human touch to make the game really stand out. From the partner development side, we have talked to quite a few companies in this arena. I think we are getting close as an industry to finding some uses for it, but not so much in the immediate future. So I think that's pretty good. Now, as I stated from Tara on the art side, um, she said, adding to what Michael said, and specifically from an art standpoint, AI generated images are a great way to visualize a lot of ideas quickly. But as the technology currently stands, it really can't replace human artists. She personally thinks that AI art will eventually become a standard part of the process. But as Michael said, the human touch will always be necessary to make something great. I think AI will eventually become a very useful tool, but not the only tool. So I think it's a, it's a hot topic right now across a lot of things. Like I've heard um, development really studios is. testing it for like writing quests and writing lore and, and writing dialogue. Um, but I, you know, I don't, I don't foresee that being in the plans for us, um, at least at this standpoint. So I think it's no. to, to make the world we want and to make Pantheon everything that's in our tenants and to make this world alive. Um, we need that human connection and that human touch that, you know, JN's putting together and, you know, David is now a part of and, and obviously CP and our world builders, like it has to come together. And I don't think AI is there right now. Will your player be allowed to have first and surname and how will this system be laid out? Michael Butler, Chris Perkins both uh, chimed in on this. It has been discussed. The current design is that players will either be able to choose a surname when they're creating their character, but it won't activate until they hit level requirement, or the player may be prompted to create their surname once level requirement has been met. Either way, there will be a surname and you will be choosing it. Next up, are there currently any ideas or designs for activated racial abilities? Chris Perkins answered, there are slated designs for racial abilities for each of the races. Uh, we're not publishing what those are or how they will work until the final one through 50 class abilities and mastery upgrades are finalized. So the answer is yes, but you don't get a no. Um, it was asked that the traversal abilities and skills, are they still planned? So great question because as we're doing class refreshes, we're looking at the one through 10 experiences and some of these aren't necessarily you know, going to be an early ability that you get. But I, I want to make sure that everyone knows, yes, that um, we also have had very strong discussions on Parting the Veil in two different episodes that you can actually find on YouTube if this is a category that really interests you. The one is based on taming and travel, and then the other is adventuring items and skills. And that's going to cover uh, um, a lot of those different things. So be sure to check those out. But just to kind of reiterate, things like the Rogue Rope, um, Druid Bridges, Summoner Rafts. I mean, those are just parts of some of the things, but they are certainly still a part of the game. Um, these items are just, they're a huge part of that adventuring sphere that lives within our current core values of the living world and kind of the sense of adventure that we want our players to fill. And directly from Chris, he just said, it, it's a huge part of our class interdependence, interdependency <laughs> um, and what makes the classes unique and we really couldn't hit the goals that we want with our classes feeling unique and having something special to bring to a group without these special abilities. You know, we've seen about, we've heard about warriors breaking through walls in the past. There's there's a lot of those um, throughout the game. Uh, so yes, they still exist. And if you missed those Party in the Veil episodes, go back and check those out. You can get a, a lot more detail. And then I'll throw something else in. So we've also um, talked recently on Party in the Veil or different streams that there's going to be gliders. Um, obviously, we just not said that the taming system. Um, there's going to be a lot of cool traversal pieces um, across Terminus for sure. Okay, last question here. So question is, would VR ever be willing to stream doing their work? As there's a lot of interest in this type of stream out there in the gaming community. We had a few of our team respond to this one, but Chris and I have actually talked about um, streaming some of his world building or some of the different things that he does. Like we talked about potentially doing it like in Parting the Veil or doing a Parting the Veil episode that, uh, that would have that. Um, and he's had a lot of interest in doing that. Now, this could be live. It could be a time-lapse format. Um, it could be a lot of different ways to do it. But he's certainly had interest in showing some of the work 
whether it's classes or world building. And I think that that would be really cool. Now, aside from Chris, we've actually had some of our artists be really excited. Um, like Chris Willis, Tara, Leonardo have all said that they'd really love to be able to stream some of their art design and the projects and stuff that they're working on when it comes to like building the world or doing model work. Um, and Michael Butler even stepped in and said that nobody would be very excited to see him do spreadsheet work. So we'll probably keep him off of there. But uh, I think this is um, I think this is something that in the future it would be really cool to see. Um, and it can come live. It can come time lapse. It can come in 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 pieces. But this is something that I think for the last year I've really wanted to talk about. So I think it would be fun to to do live stream of some of the work we're doing. And I would say that it is potentially possible that we do that. Um, and I, I'd wanna give a shout out here because Doug Bug just said he's actually watched Tara on stream on Twitch before. She actually does this for other things, not Pantheon content. But if she's given the ability to say, hey, yeah, go ahead and show some of the Pantheon content, she's like, I would love to. Yeah, for sure. I think that, that live streaming some of the work we do, um, there's a couple hurdles to cross with it, just people being ready to stream um, or people having the right setup. Uh, and what we stream obviously would have to be approved, but I think doing some character model work or some NPC work um, or creature work, stuff like that, I, I don't think would be devastating if it's not like super signature, for example. Um, so I, I think we could see that in the future. I don't wanna promise when, but it's something I've wanted to do and seeing the interest from the team would be would be really cool. So I think we could, uh, I think we could possibly see that in the future. Would you like to get your burning questions answered by Visionary Realms developers? Make sure you head on over to their forums, Discord, and other social media pages. They announce when they're taking community questions, and maybe they'll answer yours live on their next dev stream. If you found value in this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. It helps the channel grow, and it lets me know this is the type of content that you find value in. As always, thanks for watching.